All right, y'all. Gonna tear this engine down three days after we put it back together. So back under the hood of the old J truck. I feel like a broken record saying that, but uh, there she is. We're gonna get the valve covers off of it, pull that carburetor and intake off, and uh, get the valley pan off. And then we should be able to see what's going on with those lifters. Now, Engine Tech was kind enough to send me a brand new set of lifters. So we'll go ahead and check those out. Uh, they look to be pretty good quality. I haven't opened them yet, but I just figured I'd show you guys how they come. So this is a full set. So uh, the main thing we're going to look at is the taper on the end of them and just make sure that they're what we need. So let's uh, get to it. One thing I do love about this truck is these wing nuts on the valve covers. It makes it very easy to get in here and check stuff out, make sure you know what's going on and you don't have to have any special tools. You can see I'm about to take this off in the next minute maybe this other one back here is going to be a little bit tougher because i got the spark plug wire loom hooked onto it Let's see if we can get that one off there it is all right this is the side it was coming from so i reckon we could take a look at it and see what the initial impression is Let's see if we got any more bent rods Well, they seem to be all right, which is good. I wasn't wanting to buy a new set of rods. I heard them clacking around in there, so I figured one of them might be bent, but looks like we lucked out. So let's go ahead and get this other side off and uh, we'll see what's going on with this carburetor and intake manifold. All right, so I don't know how well y'all are gonna be able to see this, uh, but I was messing around here with the valve cover off and, uh, if you guys wonder what that metallic drag noise is, this truck sits so off the ground, I have to stand on this ramp thing to get a good reach in here. But anyways, uh, uh, I was poking around here with the uh, rocker arm shaft, and typically if you have a collapsed lifter, it'll go down and it won't return. But all of these actually seem to be pretty solid. So let's take a look at that, see if I can get you guys in a little closer. So you can see that uh, push rod is coming back up when I push down on the rocker. Now, some of them don't, which is probably the ones that are sitting on the camshaft right now. But I don't know. Now it's kind of seeming to me like it might not be a collapsed rocker. So I'm going to take a look at this, uh, excuse me, a collapsed lifter and then take a look at this rocker shaft and see. Maybe it didn't torque it down tight enough and that's what's causing all this. So let me get a little bit more of a better view here. I can't tell if that lighting's any better or not. I tried to adjust the lighting up there and now I'm like a blinded lizard after staring at that thing trying to get the lighting right. It doesn't look like it's any better at all. It's probably because I'm standing in the way, but let's just put this thing on the tripod. All right, there we go. So I'm starting to get the carburetor unhooked. Got my fuel line unhooked here, which I actually was arcing off the alternator on accident. I touched the poles, so hopefully that didn't screw anything up. Got my power brakes unhooked, and then this is the vacuum advance for the distributor. Uh, let's see, next we gotta get the uh, PCV breather valve off on the back side here. <laughs> I've actually timed myself. I've done this so many times. The last time I did it, I did it and uh, put the two barrel intake manifold on, took it off and put this four barrel on in an hour and a half. Uh, all right, there's our PCV. We'll just get the uh, electric choke unhooked. There's that. And uh, get that fuel line off and we'll be, ready to pull the carburetor off. Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'll probably just unhook it at the uh, manifold and pull this whole thing off as an assembly. So here's that 
a uh, better view of this side. Vacuum it as vacuum for the brake booster, uh, throttle cable, and then behind that, at the very back of the carburetor is the PCV breather valve. Then uh, there's your electric choke right there, and that's basically it. So pretty simple, not too much going on there. All right, and there's our uh, intake manifold and carburetor. I should have put the camera up here and watched me taking it out, but it was, uh, I think probably weighs like 100 pounds. So I sat right there and then picked it up and kind of sat it right here on the top of the grill and then swung my leg out. It was pretty comical, but might have been embarrassing to put on the internet. Who knows? So anyways, there's a down in the valley pan view. Uh, looks like we got a little bit of coolant there from when I was replacing the uh, radiator. Had a leak back there, so I'll clean that up and then go ahead and pop this valley pan off. So it uh, looks like it's just two bolts and then got to unhook the crank cr uh, PCV breather there. Not too bad. Well, it's a good thing it's so uh, wet in here. Otherwise, these bolts might have gotten seized up, but the coolant actually kept them nice and loose. So these are a uh, half inch, half inch, I think. Uh, yeah, half inch. Half inch bolt. So we'll just go in here. Pop this guy off. Let's see what's going on underneath there. I should put my gloves back on so I don't make a huge mess. That was one of my Christmas presents was these gloves. So pretty stoked to have those. Keep the dirt out from under my fingernails and whatnot. Alright, so here's the first look down in the valley pan. Uh, initial reactions are... I don't really know what I'm looking at. Uh, they look alright, I guess. Some of them are further down than others. I don't really know. Maybe you guys can tell me what you guys think about it. If you can even see that. Alright, I'm coming in here with my phone camera, which is much better than the GoPro, so... Uh, it looks like some of them might be collapsed. I don't really know. It definitely looks crusty and rough in here, so... That's probably not contributing to the overall health, but... Anyways, that's what we're working with. Uh, I reckon I'll pull these push rods out, rocker shafts, and then get the lifters out. It took me a minute to get my bearings and realize what I was looking at, but you can actually see the cam through these holes in the valley. Uh, I won't be able to see the lobes until I get the lifters out, but um, yeah, I just figured I'd point that out as you can see some of the camshaft there. So uh, I'm not sure if that's helpful or not, but... Uh, I know I've talked about how burnt the valves are in this thing, but gee whiz. I'm surprised this thing even still holds pressure, but uh, yeah, there's the valves in it. Looking pretty rough, so that probably ain't helping. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I decided not to replace the lifters. So when I got in there, uh, the first thing I did was I did a test. I pushed the push rod into the lifter cup to see if it would spring back. Normally when you have a collapsed lifter, the push rod just stays uh, down. It doesn't have any spring to it when you push it into the lifter. There's supposed to be a little bit of hydraulic cushion. So that's what you're looking for. So I checked all of them and all of them actually did check out. Um, there was a little bit of excessive lash on one of the rockers, which has been, could have been causing the ticking. I do have the new lifters, but the thing with lifters and a solid cam is if you replace just one and not the other, a lot of the times you'll get an uneven wear pattern. And so the lobe of the cam is gonna wipe out the lifters or vice versa, the hardened seal of the lifters is gonna wipe out the old soft metal of the cam. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff online about cam metals and uh, you know, an old cam, it'll wear the top layer of the metal off. Uh, so you lose some of your lobe and also it exposes a little bit of a weakened, less well cast metal. Um, so that's why they should be replaced as a set. So I basically had a 50-50 chance of wiping out the lifter uh, if I replace that with the camshaft. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. So let's just shut up and get to work. How about it? All right, so here's my new valley pan gasket for this piece right here. I uh, made that out of a piece of cardboard, so I wasn't fixing to spend the $25 on some quart gasket off the internet. It's probably made in China anyways, so I just 
cut it out with cardboard and then uh, put some of this here vinyl cement along the edge just to keep all the pieces together. So hopefully that holds up. Let's uh, get the valley pan back on. Just going to hit it with some of this just to kind of get the gasket to be a little bit more rigid and keep those layers together. Just brushing on a little bit of upholstery and trim glue. So as you can see, the new gasket fits on there perfect. No need to spend $25 on some quart gasket when you can DIY your own up and make it 10 times better and cheaper. So, all right, we got the valley pan cover back on. This was a huge pain in the ass, but what you gotta do if you're not gonna take the distributor and the water outlet here out is uh, you gotta come in from the side. So you're gonna slide it between the intake manifold stud, the distributor, and then this water outlet right here and just kind of slide everything in from the left and then you can eventually plop it down. Uh, but yeah, I probably would recommend just doing the whole engine out of the truck at this point. Um, if you're gonna do all of this, including the last video on the push rods. So it's probably just gonna need to rebuild at some point anyways. I'm just trying to get the thing running and driving a little bit so I can enjoy it. But if I were to do this over, I would uh, replace everything at once. Well, there she is in all her beauty. So here's an update video. A lot of y'all were asking about what's going on with the lifters. So um, as you can see, we got it out now. Let me pop the hood real quick. Pop the hood, see what's going on. It's not ticking too badly. It really only likes to tick uh, at high RPM. So I'm thinking I might have an exhaust leak or something. That's what my dad thinks it is. Uh, I topped off the power steering if that was it but you can still barely hear a little bit of a tick so i don't exactly know what's going on with it but uh that last clip i had it timed about 10 degrees too fast so i retarded the timing a little bit and you can see it's running a lot smoother i uh, got a nice firm exhaust note so uh i mean i'm just gonna call this project done for now basically until it gives me a reason to reinvestigate i don't think i'll open it back up until I do a full rebuild. So just wanted to give a quick update there. Appreciate y'all watching and uh, hopefully this was a good educational resource for some of you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Always happy to help where I can and help preserve full-size Jeeps and AMC heritage. So hope you all have a good week ahead. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. So as you might be able to hear, the RPM tick gets noticeably louder at high speed. Uh, it gets noticeably louder at higher RPMs, so I'm not sure what that indicates. Uh, like we check the valves, the lifters, the push rods, it could be any sort of valve train noise. Um, as we also mentioned, it might be an uh, exhaust leak, so just wanted to let you guys get into the cab and hear it from inside while we're driving. Uh, maybe you guys can help me identify the source of that noise, because I've checked everything I know to check.